All right, and we back. I'm gonna talk about some college football today. We actually had a significant amount of stuff happen this past weekend. I'm, to, I'm doing this on, I'm recording this 11, 12. I think you'll see this 11, 13. So the rankings will be out by the time you see this video, but I don't really wanna talk about the rankings as much. I wanna talk specifically about what happened this past weekend. We saw a lot of stuff, right? I'm not gonna talk about every game. I do wanna give a shout out to Army, right? That's where I wanna start this video off. Army probably just punched a ticket to the American Championship game. They're 7-0 in conference play. And the only other two teams that are winless, or excuse me, don't have more than two losses, are Tulane and Navy. They're 6-0 and 5-1. And, and neither of those teams can end better than 6-2 and two because they play each other, right? So as long, even, even, even Army only plays one more game in conference championship game, but as long as, like, it's just a matter of time. They don't play this week. They do play Notre Dame the following week after, and then they end their season against UTSA. This is a team that theoretically could if they win the American, they could have the auto bid in the fifth thing if Boise State slips up. But if you beat Notre Dame and win the American, there's a, there's a legit chance that they have a guaranteed shot at the top 12 teams overall. So again, huge shout out to Army. Nobody saw this coming coming into the season. They have been fantastic all season. Such a fun team to watch. Bryson Daly's back. Gutted out a really tough win against North Texas. It's really cool to see the Army football program play this way. Another team that's really cool to see, Indiana. Indiana had a really big test against a good Michigan team, a really elite defense on the Michigan side. They're 10 and 0. They play two games. They don't have a game this week. They play number, I mean, right now, number three, Ohio State in Columbus. If you win that game, literally, that game, assuming you don't, there's no slip ups, decides who goes to the Big Ten Championship to take on Oregon. Like, that is the one of the biggest games of the season. And for an Indiana team in Kirkinetti's first year, again, you, uh, you still haven't played anybody great. You played good teams, and, and, and I don't want people to, to think that I'm sitting here talking bad on Indiana because I'm, I'm, I think they're elite. They've played good teams. They have yet to play a great team. That's what Ohio State's going to do. If they can show out against Ohio State, I don't necessarily know if they're going to win, but if they can show out against Ohio State, like they're going to make the playoffs. And they're probably going to make the playoffs as it is unless they fall apart down the stretch, but it's really cool to see Indiana. This is legitimately the, probably the, the most important two-week stretch of Indiana football history. Like That's incredible to say out loud. Heading to the ACC, you know we're here to talk about Miami. They have played with fire for the last month. They have won incredible games against Virginia Tech, Cal, Louisville, Duke. All of them, they were down in the third quarter or the fourth quarter and came back to win them all. Couldn't do it against Georgia Tech. When you play with fire, you get burned, and that's what happened. Cam Ward, he's played great. Counting stats were good. Georgia Tech made them lose the game. I mean, Georgia Tech, they, Georgia Tech uh, excuse me, Miami didn't lose this game. Georgia Tech won this game. They, they defense played a solid enough game. The offense was consistently using misdirections and motions to confuse the Miami defense. And even though if you're Miami, you did lose, you still control your own destiny in terms of getting to the ACC championship game. You make it to the ACC championship game. You win that game. You're in the playoffs anyways. But it just, it sucks to see this team finally kind of like, I wish they had figured it out. But it is good to see Georgia Tech. Brent Key, on his first full year, they have been a good football team. Great at some points. And they look great this weekend. Next up, I want to talk about a coach on the hot seat. We're going to talk about Brent Venables. He's not going to get fired. His buyout, I'm looking at it here, is like $45 million. They're not going to pay him that to not coach. I said throughout the first couple videos that I did like this, you can go back and look at them. I said Oklahoma was going to go 7-5 and five or 6-6. Six and six. They're 5-5 five and five right now. Like, I knew this was going to happen. They played arguably the toughest schedule in the country, and they really didn't have an elite offense. They had a lot of question marks there, and that's what we've seen. I mean, and the way they lost this game against Missouri was brutal. Brutal. I mean, they were up 23-16 with two minutes to go. Missouri scores, and then Missouri picks up a Jackson Arnold fumble and scoops and scores it to take a 30-23 to lead. I mean, it was just incredible. They, and it doesn't get any easier. You have to go to Alabama, and you play LSU. I messed that up. It's home, at Al home against Alabama and at LSU. But still, that is not going to be an easy way to— I mean, legitimately, your 25-year bowl streak is on the line. Like, that's how difficult the season has been. And again, Venables isn't going anywhere. His buyout's too big. But going into next season, definitely on the hot seat. Speaking of Alabama, couldn't have had a better weekend. Georgia loss. You whooped the shit out of LSU. I mean, it's been an up and down year for uh, Kalen DeBoer, Jalen Milrow, and the Alabama Crimson Tide, but Alabama looks good. They're going to make the playoffs, assuming they don't collapse down the stretch. And the head-to-head -head victory is huge. I mean, there's there's a theoretical chance where there's a lot of teams that are have two losses or one loss in, uh, in SEC play and that are vying for that final spot in the SEC Championship game. Head-to-head -head victories are huge. Alabama has a big one. I do want to leave the SEC for a second and talk about some playoff hopefuls, especially one on the Big 12. Shout out to the Kansas Jayhawks knocking off Iowa State. You're a bunch of frauds. And as much as I wanted Iowa State to do well just because I wanted to see the Big 12 with multiple teams in the playoff, it does it does feel good to see Kansas knock out Iowa State. Now, theoretically, they're not necessarily eliminated from playoff contention, and they can still win 10 games, which they've never done. Shout out. Them and Vanderbilt, the only teams to never win 10 games in, in their history. So, But Colorado, I mean, they beat Texas Tech, and that win is huge for them because it gives them a leg up on Iowa State in Big 12 play. But that same thing happened in the ACC, right? Eli Holstein got hurt. 
in Pitt fell to Virginia. They were undefeated going into two last week, and then they lose to SMU, and then they lose here against Virginia. Their playoff hope is probably done. They would need a minor miracle to, to make the AC championship anyways, and they'd have to beat Clemson. But if Clemson beats them this week, which they probably will, then they're officially dead in the water. And then back to the SEC, LSU, 6-3. Again, it's a three-loss SEC team, and I understand there's a lot of SEC bias, but even though they have the win over Ole Miss, which looks much better now, they have the loss to USC, which it looks like shit now. And none of these teams, like, legitimately, like, it was playoff or bust coming into the season, but it's just disappointing, especially for LSU and Iowa State and Pitt. Like, the way they started this season, there was, like, a real chance that we saw all three of them in the playoffs, and now we're probably not going to see any of them. But you know who's back? Ole Miss. 7-2 and two with a win over Georgia. Jackson Dart obviously had an injury scare, but Austin Simmons looked great. Obviously, I don't think Georgia falls out of the top 12, but I think Ole Miss is going to jump up significantly to maybe, like, right on the outside, like, at least 15. But listen, Ole Miss controls their own destiny, and that's huge. You win out, I believe they'd make the SEC championship game due to tiebreakers, and they've never made the SEC championship game in their entire history. Like, that's incredible to say, but Ole Miss controls their own destiny. Make the SEC championship game one game to lock yourself into a top four seed, and then anything can happen. But to me, that's what happened. The rankings would come out tonight. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the rankings. I just, obviously, Oregon's still the number one team in the country. And we'll, uh, you know, I, I think I am going to make a video about the rankings again because it's going to be interesting to see where teams move. All, I didn't even mention BYU, who had a hell of a win. Controversies aside, Utah, their athletic department, or excuse me, their athletic director needs to fucking read the room. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see more stuff like this, make sure to comment down below. If you want to see anything, comment down below. But YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. So you should let me know. Like and subscribe and let me know what you think about it.